with y'all. Peace and blessings. God bless y'all. I'm Jarvis Kingston, and I hope y'all doing all right, staying strong and solid in these times that run. I pray that you have repented and that you are baptized. I pray that you are safe, protected, and prayed up. And I just hope that your life gets better day by day and that whatever you're going through, that the Most High be with you and gives you more strength and that you trust the Lord every day from now on, okay? Now, today's message, I just want to discuss about why you shouldn't argue about what his name is, what the father and the son's name is, okay? And in today's world, we're in this age of information and the age of research and how people will always, you know, question and doubt the things of the creator and his son and the existence of it or um, what their names are. People like to get very technical about it and very scholarish about it. You get what I'm saying? And sometimes people debate over too much things that shouldn't even be debatable. You get what I'm saying? And um, people will, you know, so-called believers or what have you. Some people go by God. Some people go by Jesus. Some say Yahuwah, Yahweh Shai. Some say Yeshua, Hamashiach. Um, some say Elohim. I mean, there's a lot of ways to call on him, call on his name, you know. And what what's going on is that some people will say that the letter J never existed in Hebrew or what have you, so it can't be Jesus or this or what have you. And then a lot of times people will just say it's Yahuwah, it's Yah, it's Yahweh, and things of that nature. So you have a lot of believers and different types of people who argue about what his name is and what it is. And the word, the Bible shows you many times about how many different names he goes by and how many different ways to call him and what have you. But there are specifically two scriptures that definitely end that debate. And it is Proverbs chapter 30, verse 4, and Revelation 19, verse 12. I want to read these two scriptures importantly because I feel like these two scriptures settle that debate on what his name is and what his son's name is, you know. Because I feel like in these end times, there's just too much going on to argue about grammar or argue about language, or argue about translation. Um, as long as you know the most high for yourself, you're obeying the gospel, you're into the sound doctrine and the covenant and the promises of the Lord and constantly doing right and on that narrow path and doing the Father's will and doing Father's business, that's what matters. Um, you know, a lot of people like to be all technical and grammarish about it, but a lot of people have that Pharisee spirit and they don't even realize it. People always want to have that uppity, self-righteous approach to things of the spirit or things of God um, or the creator or the Bible. People want to be have that Pharisee spirit. A lot of people today don't have the Holy Spirit. They don't have the comforter. A lot of people have that debating spirit. They have that argumentative spirit. They have that Pharisee spirit, that law debater spirit, that, that scribe spirit. A lot of people have that. Um, the way people argue over things like this shouldn't even be arguing about, you know what I'm saying? Because the prophets always called him by many names as well. Um, the forefathers called him by many names. Even the son called him by many names, you know? So as long as you're into true worship, true praising, you're in the spirit, the whole, you have the Holy Spirit, you have the comforter. Um, you are repented, you are baptized, you are a new creature in Christ, you are born again, um, you are living right and doing better. That's the sole focus. So you're doing the Father's will, you're doing Father's business, you're, you're winning souls for the kingdom of heaven. That's the big point at the end of the day. Some people just get too caught up with other things of it, and that really amounts to nothing, you know, um, because there's two scriptures that I already debate that put an end to that debate, okay? So we shouldn't be all worked up over literature or being all worked up over language because the father, he's the maker of all languages. He's the maker of all people. He, he We're made in his image of likeness. He's the maker of communication. And the, the, the word is him. He is the word, right? Um, he declares everything that is good. He's the maker of it all. Um, so we have to really have humility and meekness about things of the spirit and spiritual truths. You know what I'm saying? Because too much people get to uh, vain and very haughty and arrogant and prideful about it. You know what I'm saying? So um, what I would love to do is just read just these two scriptures alone and just kind of go from there. Okay, so here we go. The book of Proverbs chapter 30, verse four. Who has ascended up into heaven or descended? Who has gathered the wind in his fists? Who has bound the waters in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what's his son's name if you know it? You see, the reason why Proverbs thirty, the reason why Proverbs chapter thirty verse four says that, is because 
It's letting you know to stay in your place spiritually. Okay, at the end of the day, the Father and the Son, they run the show, not you. You need to just praise him, acknowledge him for who he is and his works. You're not in your right mind to debate or dictate what things are. Okay, the Father and Son, they're way too special to have just one name. They're way too special to have that. The Father has over 900 names. His Son has over 941 names. And y'all sit here argue about, oh, it's not this, it's that, it's this, it's not that. It's like, are y'all serious? The Father and the Son are too special to have just one name. That parent-son, that parent-child relationship is very powerful, dynamic, spiritually and physically. Think about how when you have a child, right, the birth certificate might just have the first name, last name, or middle name, or have you. But as the child gets older, you start just giving your random, you start giving your child random nicknames, don't you? You'd be like, boy, you always doing this and that. I'm gonna just call you this from now on. Or girl, you always doing this and that. This is your new nickname now. See, parents give their children nicknames for many different reasons. The father gave his son so much different names because he's the only begotten son. So he's worthy. He is able. He has all the power. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. So he he can have all the names that he wants, really. It's his prerogative. It's his privilege. It's his right. Um, it's his power, his status spiritually, right? And the prophets always had a different name to call him by. You know, like Ezekiel said, the son of man. Daniel said, the holy one, the anointed one. Isaiah said the branch. You see how each prophet, they all had a different way to call him. They never just called him by one name solely. They always had a different way of calling him. So that's why you shouldn't even debate about, oh, is this, is that. You shouldn't debate about that because the prophets, the forefathers, they, they knew all the Hebrew. They knew what the deal was and they knew he's too special to have just one name. You could call him by many names, really. You get what I'm saying? The importance is not just the grammar, literature, and translation. The importance is the acknowledgement of the Father, and Son, and the Holy Spirit, and understanding that to get to the Father, you have to get through the Son. That's the most important aspect of it all, because the Father is the maker of all languages. Remember, the Father scrambled everything. He scrambled all the peoples of, of this earth. He scrambled all of it. So we have to remember that, all right? The Father and the Son just have so much names. And I'm going to read another scripture that supports this too. The book of Revelations, chapter 19, verse 12. Verse twelve. The book of Revelations, chapter 19, verse 12. We're going to really go in Revelations. And you know, out of all the books in the Bible, the Revelations is the heaviest chapter. So we're going to go into that one. Revelations, chapter 19, verse 12. His eyes were as red as fire, flamed as fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written on him that no one knew but himself. Now, think about that. He has a name written on him that nobody knows but him. That's powerful. He has a name written on him that only he knows. Mind you, Revelations is the vision that John had when John was on the island. And John saw the end times. He saw how Christ returned. He saw how all this unfolded. And he saw him in his glory and everything, all the details. And he said himself that he has a name written on him that nobody knows but him. So even John couldn't interpret it. John couldn't even recognize it. Because if it was Hebrew, he would have easily said it. Because they were all in the Hebrew. Like, of course, Hebrew is the language that the Father did direct us to. Everything is in the Hebrew. Yes, it is. But things can be translated into Greek um, and different languages. Like, remember, Paul reached out to the Greeks and other nations, too. So other nations had different languages and ways to call them. You get what I'm saying? So um, at the end of the day, um, if 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 it was in Hebrew, John would have easily said it with no problem, but he couldn't even recognize it because the name written on him that only the son knows, it must not either be, it, it can't be in Hebrew or Latin or uh, Arabic or Greek or any language because he would have easily translated it. You see what I'm saying? Whenever something in the Bible is written in a different language, the Bible always talks about how it's translated in Hebrew or Greek. You notice that. In Revelations 19, 12, it doesn't say either of that. So only the son knows his whole name. Because remember, if the father works in mysterious ways, so does the son. Because the son and the father are one. Remember, Christ said that he said, me and my father are one. So if the dad is, if the father is mysterious, so is the son. So that's why when we argue about literature, and grammar and translations, that's not something to argue about because really we're the last of his creation. 
if there's anybody who definitely knows all the Hebrew, all that stuff, it was definitely all the angels up there, all the cherubims, all the, you know, Satan and the fallen angels. They know that stuff from front to back. Because remember, when they were all up there in heaven, they were right by the Father. They were right there seeing all his glory and his power. They know all the Hebrew, all the names from front to back. So we could argue and debate down here all we want to about what it is and what it isn't. Bruh, we are the last of the last, bro. <laughs> this is why we have to have meekness and humility, okay? You cannot put research over the word. You cannot put research over prophecy. You can't put, <laughs> you know, you know, man's wisdom is foolishness to God, man. All right? You cannot add or take away what the Father and the Son already established, all right? So it's so crazy how people get worked up over words and translations and, and grammar. It's so crazy how people get so tight about that. And the word puts an end to all those debates. Revelations 19.12 settles that debate. And Proverbs 34 represent, ends that debate too, okay? So I just wanted to express this and just put this in a message because we too much people nowadays are arguing about the wrong stuff, bro. In these end times we in, bro, people need to repent, get baptized. People need to be born again. People need to be a new creature in Christ. If we're examples, if we're lights of the world, we are, you know, we are uh, salts of the earth. We are vessels. We are men and women of the most high. We can't be out here debating and arguing about things that's already established. That gives off bad examples to others out there that want to be into the faith or want to um, be converted into all of this or want to want the Lord or want to start a fresh life. They can't see us arguing and debating about things. That doesn't even need to be debated about in the first place, okay? So that puts an end to all the debate on what his name is. It's not this, it's not that, bro. Don't don't get worked up over that, okay? You could call him El Elohim, Yahuwah, you know, Father, Abba. Like, there's so much ways to say it. Some say Jesus, some say Yeshua, some say Yahawashai, um, some say the like he 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 goes by so much names, okay, the Messiah, the mediator, it goes on and on, okay, um, it goes on and on, there's nothing to really get worked up and debate about, okay, so I really wanted to direct this message at you know the Hebrew camps, man, these camps, bro, you know, and these others uh, and those other people, man, because they always want to debate about things that the word already establishes, okay, so that's that, man, I just wanted to express that because. We should not be arguing and debating about the father and son's name. We should just be doing better and living right in these end times, okay? Things are speeding up heavy. Prophecies being fulfilled left and right. There's not a time to debate about language and, and grammar, all right? <laughs> Prophecy goes beyond literature. It goes beyond translations because people of different customs, different languages, different nations can still call out to the father and son, like... Even when Revelations, right, when the scripture talks about the adopted people and the millions of nations, millions of races, millions of people, millions of tongues, tribes, it's going to be all types of people coming from their different walks of life, different backgrounds, different cultures, different languages, still praising the same father, still praising the same son. Why are we getting so worked up over literature? You get what I'm saying? Even this whole English language that we speak isn't even our real tongue in the first place, but we're using what we've been pressed upon us, even through this indoctrination of the school system, even through all this brainwashing and lies and deceptions, we are still able to access the father and son through his word. All right. We are still able to communicate with him. He is still able to speak to us through that still voice. You know, Christ said, my sheep hear my voice. We're still able to be in tune with the father and son, even through all the things we've been indoctrinated and lied about with. You get what I'm saying? Society has tried to tell us that the Bible isn't real and we could go to the word and our life will get better. We live by the word. Our lives get better. Ain't that something? We could still access the father and son through anything, through all the attacks and devices the enemy try to hold against us. OK, us as a body of Christ, we cannot be divided, man. We got to stand strong and firm. All right. Put all that little petty stuff to the side and let's all praise and fellowship and worship him together. Let's all win souls for the kingdom together. All right. Let's all have that love with one another. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love the Lord as with all your mind, heart, and soul. All right? Come on, y'all. Let's let's get it together. Let's be more mature. All right? Stop being petty and childish and argumentative and debating so much. Let's come on. Let's have that full wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. All right? So I just want to settle that, man. You know, just wanted to declare that. This, this is not a time to debate about stuff like that, bro. 
I just want to read these scriptures just one more time for those, okay? Proverbs chapter 30, verse 4. Who has ascended up into heaven or descended? Who has gathered the wind in his fist? Who has bound the waters in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what's his son's name, if you know it? You see, that's a rhetorical question because it's telling you there's no real right or wrong answer about that question. It's testing you if see if you could acknowledge him for who he, who for who and him and his son is. It's not about a literature uh, grammar game. It's a acknowledging the father and the son thing, okay? Because Greek people call Christ Christos or Christos. That's how you say it in Greek. In Hebrew, you could say Yeshua, Yahweh Shai. There, there's almost there's so much translations through different languages all over the earth. Okay, so don't trip about it. Okay, don't get too worked up. Revelation nineteen verse twelve. Revelation nineteen verse twelve. Okay, yes. His eyes are a flame of fire, and on his head are many royal crowns, and he has a name written on him that nobody knows but him. Come on, man. That ends all of the bait. <laughs> because mind you, when the when the father when the son comes back, when he comes back, it's not gonna be uh it's not gonna be what we thought it was all this time, what we're what we're working with right now. See, right now we just have Yeshua, Yahweh Shai, Jesus. We're working with what we have through the scriptures and through research of what we have within our reach. But Re- Re- Revelation 19, verse 12, it dictates that hey, when he comes back, he's gonna have a name written on him that nobody knows but him. Okay, so it's not going to, when he comes back, it's not going to be uh, Yeshua, Yahweh Shai. It's not going to be Jesus. It's not going to be none of that. It's going to be a name only he knows. And we have to acknowledge that and respect that and fear the Lord and respect prophecy and respect the events that's going to play out in the end times and respect just the whole event of Christ coming back. That's the main event. See, the prophets were the build up. Christ is the main event. All right, he, the son, he, him coming back. For us, coming back for his people, come back for all of us who have done right, who have done what we had to do. All right. Lamb's book of life. All right. Everlasting life, a hundredfold eternal life. All right. A crown, the robes. All right. Treasures in heaven. All right. He is coming back for his people, his real people. OK, <laughs> not these false prophets, not these false apostles, not these deceivers, not these lukewarm people. <laughs> No, no, not these little wishy-washy men. He coming back for his people, all right? We are his people. We are the body of Christ, man. Let's embrace that and let's keep working. Let us let us not, let him not come back with our work undone, okay? Let us keep putting this work and let's keep putting our hands to the plow, all right? Let's put our hands to the plow, people. Arguing over translations and uh, culture and all, that's not, that's not sound doctrine. That's not gospel, man, all right? Wedding feast of the Lamb, all right, Lamb's book of life, treasures in heaven, all right, doing Father's will, doing Father's business, winning souls. That's what it's all about, all right? Let's not get so grammar schoolish and all debating and all that. That leads to nothing, all right? Paul talks about not having strife among brethren, you know, walking in love, all right? So just wanted to remind y'all, okay? Just wanted to break that down about what his name is, what his son's name is. Don't get too... You know, know it all spirit about that, okay? So, there you have it, people, all right? Just wanted to break that down, man. So, very important that we just acknowledge that there's a father and a son who loves us, all right? And let's just live better and do better, okay? So, there you have it, people. What I would love, what I would love to do as we close out is give all the glory to the Most High of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and praise the only begotten Son to die for our sins and just close off from there, all right? So, here we go. All right, he's the Adam, the advocate, the almighty, the alpha and omega. Amen. Amen. The apostle of our profession, the arm of the Lord, the atoning sacrifice for our sins, the author and finisher of our faith, the author and perfecter of our faith, the author of life, the author of salvation, the beginning and the end, the beginning of creation of God, the beloved son, the blessing only potent and the blessing only ruler, the branch, the bread of God, the bread of life, the bridegroom, the capstone, the captain of salvation, the chief cornerstone, the chief shepherd, Christ, the Christ of God. The consolation of Israel, the cornerstone, the counselor, the creator, the day spring, the deliverer, the desire of the nations, the door, the elect of God, Emmanuel, the eternal life, the everlasting father, the faith and true witness, faithful and true, the faithful witness, the first and the last, the first begotten, the firstborn from the dead, firstborn of all creation, the forerunner, the gate, the glory of the Lord, God, the good shepherd, the great high priest, the great shepherd, the head of the church. 
the heir of all things, the high priest, holy and true, the holy one, the hope, the hope of glory, the horn of salvation, the I am, the image of God, Jehovah, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus, the judge of Israel, the judge, king eternal. Yes, yes, he is the king of Israel. Yes, yes, the king of kings. Yes, he is the king of kings and lord of lords, king of saints, king of the ages, king of the Jews, the king, the lamb, the lamb of God, the lamb without blemish, the last Adam, the lawgiver, the leader, the commander, the life, the life of the world, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the living one, the living stone, the Lord, the Lord, Yah, Yahweh, 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 Shai, Yahweh, Yahweh, Ahaya, Shai, Yeshua, Hamashiach, Barakathah, Shalom, Shalom, Yeshua, Elohim. Emmanuel, our righteousness, Lord of all, Lord of glory, Lord of lords, man from heaven, man of sorrows, man of sorrows, mediator of the new covenant, the mediator, the messenger of the covenant, the Messiah, the mighty God, the mighty one, the morning star, the Nazarene, the offspring of David, the only begotten son of God, our great God and savior, our holiness, our spiritual husband, our Passover, our protection, our redemption, our righteousness, our sacrifice to Passover lamb, the power of God, the power of Yah. The power of Yahuwah, the precious cornerstone, the prince of kings, the prince of life, the prince of peace, the prophet, the redeemer, the resurrection of life, the revelation, the righteous branch, the righteous one, the rock, the root of David, the rose of Sharon, the ruler of God's creation, the ruler of the kings of the earth, the savior, the seed of woman, the shepherd and bishop of souls, the Shalom, the son of David, the Shiloh, the son of God, the son of man, the son of Yah, the son of the blessed, son of the most high God. The source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, the son of righteousness, the just one, the one mediator, the stone the builders rejected, the true bread, the true God, the true light, the true vine, the truth, the way, the way, the truth, the life, the wisdom of God, the witness, the witness of Yah, the witness of Yahuwah, the wonderful counselor, the word, the wonderful child, the word of the Yah, the word of God, the word of Yahuwah, the word of Yeshua, the word of Yahweh Shai, the word of life, the word. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, we touch and agree. Hallelujah. Yes. Serve an amazing creator, and his son is amazing for dying for our sins, all right? So there you have it, people. As I closed out, I like to close out with over the 200 names that he has, really, just to sort that up. But he really has, the son has over 941 names. The father has over 900 names in all types of translations, Hebrew, uh, Greek, uh, Arabic, Latin, like all of that, man, you know? Because you can't be uh, biased or prejudiced or whatnot. There's people all over the earth through their language who could still serve the father and son. You remember when other people were doing the will and the works, the disciples was like, well, who are they? And Christ said, hey, if they're not if they're not against us, then they're with us. Because Christ and the disciples was letting, Christ was letting them know, like, hey, there's going to be people who may look a little different, who may speak a little different, but they're still doing the works. OK, and that's how the body of Christ is overall. All right, it's an inside thing. It's not an outside thing. Y'all be tripping about vain things and outside stuff, man. Remember the Lord, he cares about the heart of a person, not the appearance. That's how the Lord judge a man. He judge a man by the heart, not the appearance. Y'all get caught up with appearance and looks and and how people talk and whatnot, and y'all get caught up in the wrong things, see? Got to get out of that thinking. That type of thinking has disrupted and divided the body of Christ. It has divided bonds and friendships and fellowship and things of that nature all right we got to have harmony and peace all right we got to have a clarity of understanding and working through things and working with working together on things okay come on y'all the father and the son are too special to have just one name they have a whole bunch of names so you can call them by any name hallelujah you scream out you cry out to him any way you can all right in the midst of your situation what you're going through you call out on him all right praise him give him glory all right. So I just want to explain that. All right. So there you have it, people. All right. I pray to God that whoever listens to this message, I pray that you get baptized, that your life over the most high. I pray that you repent and start over. I pray that you have new beginnings. I pray that you call his name as many ways as you can. I pray that you stay prayed up. I hope that you stay in his presence. You stand firm and steadfast. You get through your situations daily. And I just pray that the Most High just refines you in a beautiful way inside out. I just hope the Most High makes you more stronger and wiser. And I just hope that you keep on loving the Lord with all your mind, heart, and soul. And I pray that you love your neighbor as you love yourself. I'm Jarvis Kingston. I got much love for y'all. God bless y'all. Peace.